On this episode, we talk about personal letters and flipping houses. What's up everybody, I'm Jason Cassidy. Welcome to Ask a Realtor episode 10. We did it, we made it to number 10. Super excited. My goal for 2016 is to get a lot more of these out for everybody, so keep the questions coming at hashtag Ask a Realtor on Twitter. You can also write me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you may find me, and I'll try to get that answer, that question answered. Um, let's get, oh, this is the first show of 2016. So hopefully your year is off to a good start. Um, hopefully your goals are uh, underway. And um, yeah, good luck with that. So uh, let's get right into the questions. Question one. Should you write a personal letter with your offer? Question one, should you write a personal letter with your offer? Um, I think it's a great idea, especially if you're in a, a competitive offer situation like we're seeing a lot now, uh, multiple offers and whatnot. Uh, it's always good to do something that's gonna make you stand out above uh, maybe another buyer. In fact, when I'm walking buyers through the house, uh, I try to mentally kind of take note of things that are in the house. So if uh, there's a lot of golf memorabilia or a golfer, when you're writing a letter, you know, don't lie, but if you're a golfer too, you kind of point that out. Um, it, it's, it's exceptionally uh, works well, I think, when you're uh, maybe a young couple and uh, you don't have a kid and you're gonna, you know, you're trying to find your house together that you wanna grow your family in, and then the people in the house that are moving out, they had kids or, you know, had their kids in that house. That could be a great tool, because in your letter you can say, hey, I'm really looking forward to raising my family in the home just like you raised your family in your home. You can kind of pull in some heartstrings there and it, it does tend to work. You have to be careful. I mean, you can't uh, you can't uh, get discriminatory when you write your letter. You can't say, "Hey, uh, I'm a white guy. You're a white guy. Sell me your house," because you'll both get into trouble of any of those protected class type scenarios. Don't do that. But if you can find ways to kind of tug on the heartstrings, it's always going to work in your benefit. And um, now, again, it's it's not going to overcome a five thousand dollar difference in the offer price. You know, if someone, if you have to be uh, kind of neck and neck on the offer price to try to have that be the pushover. But anything you can do to help, I think, is uh, is good. So be aware when you're walking through the house. See if there's maybe anything you can pick up for your offer letter to try to get your offer accepted. Good question. What is flipping a house? Question two, what is flipping houses? Um, that's a good question. I think uh, a lot of the people in the industry are very familiar with flipping a house or whatnot, but maybe someone who hasn't done it before you know, has some questions. So you know, you'll see it on TV, flip this house and uh, all the flip search and all that type of stuff. I think that's a little bit more uh, glamorous than what it really is. I mean, the basic premise of flipping a house is that um, you know, you find a, a property uh, undervalued in some way, whether that be a short sale or a foreclosure, a bank owned property or an auction property or something that's under the market value already because you want to start out with a little bit of cushion. And what you're going to do is generally in those scenarios, a foreclosed home, bank owned home or something like that are going to have some cosmetic kind of work that needs to be done. So when you're flipping the house, what you're doing is you're buying the house without the intention of ever living in it. You just want to fix it back up and put it back on the market at or above market value. Um, and in order to try to make some quick profit. So investors, you know, there's investors out there that just make careers and livings out of that. You know, if they have three or four going at any given time, um, they can, you can make, a, you know, good money. Uh, I think now in 2016, that market has uh, shifted a little bit. The, uh, you're not able to find the undervalued homes as much as you were in say 2011 and 2012 at what was considered kind of the bottom of the market. Um, back in those days, there were short sales and foreclosures and auctions going on all the time. And nowadays, that's not necessarily the case. We're in kind of more of a seller's market. So price Prices are already higher, even on homes that aren't, uh, you know, that need work done to them. So uh, the margins are a little bit smaller now in 2016 than they were in the past, but it is still possible to find good deals. And uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a distressed sale. You can find a normal sale on the market that just is undervalued. Maybe it's just an older home and it needs to be updated. Uh, maybe the agent is an out of area agent and they're just not privy to what the market is and they underpriced the home, you could potentially flip homes that way too. It's just fewer and far between. So um, for the most part, when you're flipping homes, you know, especially if it's just, you know, you uh, husband, wife team, or just a single person, not like a, you know, big time investor, um, it, it's important to think of your hold time. That's kind of the key to the entire thing. Um, you got to do whatever you can to get that thing fixed up, done, you know, done correctly with a licensed contractor and get it back on the market, ready to sell quickly. Um, what can kill a, a flip and your profit the quickest is uh, unexpected longer hold time than you thought. You know, if you budgeted in a 90-day flip, um, you know, to do the work and sell it, 
uh, but it turns out to be 180 days, like you're cutting into a lot of your profit right out of the gate there. So um, it, that, just remember hold time, whatever can get it done the quickest correctly, um, and then whatever helps it sell the quickest. So when you're picking you know, paint colors and stuff, try to be very neutral, uh, very vanilla, because you want um, to appeal to the most, uh, the biggest pool of buyers for that. Uh, you don't want to alienate anybody who would have bought, but maybe they didn't like the color red that you picked on the wall. Don't do that, just pick a neutral color to try to appeal to as many buyers as possible and you could potentially flip a house. So um, yeah, good question. Thanks for tuning in to episode 10. Hopefully you stick around for more. Just subscribe to the YouTube button below to get email notifications whenever a new episode comes out. And if you found me through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or whatever, uh, keep following me there because I'll keep posting. Remember, ask the questions using hashtag askarealtor. Uh, it's been out here somewhere, probably in the corner. And um, you can uh, ask me anytime and I'll try to do my best to answer the questions. Keep them coming and have a good 2016. I'll see you next time.